Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be implementing two kind of more advanced features. The first will be implementing Google Tag Manager's data layer, and I'll talk about what each one of the variables inside there is, and kind of what the values are, and, and why it's there in the first place. The second feature we're going to explore is the custom HTML tag. So for any tag that is not present in the tag template section of GTM, you can basically add any JavaScript code block to your custom HTML tag, and then it will deploy. We'll show you how to do this with the Facebook tag, or the Facebook, Facebook pixel is what they call it. All right, so let, let's get started. Let's head over to my website code file. This is a single page website, right? So GTM will be on every page of your website. For the purpose of this demo, it's just a single page website. Here's my GTM code snippet, right? It's as high up in the head as possible. And you've got that failover code snippet here. It's as high up in the body as possible. Now let's grab the data layer. So I grabbed the example for the data layer over here on this Google Help Center article. And I customized it to whatever I needed to for this demo. Here's my version, let's go through it. The formatting is very similar, I just added a few new variables and values. So above the Google Tag Manager code snippet, you want the data layer to load. The data layer is a piece of JavaScript code and it's being called by Google Tag Manager. So all of this stuff here is basically uh, referenceable by Google Tag Manager. Let's go through these. So the data layer is passing a variable name called event, and then it's got a value of conversion, a name of email, and it's got a value of the email on the site that you'll see very soon. Now, now this will be supplied by a web developer, of course, and it'll likely be dynamic. For the purpose of this demo, it's, it's just static. And I've got a value, or sorry, a variable name of visitor type, and the value is customer. This is an important one. So this could be conversion value or, you know, whichever. But uh, we've got here order, and then we've got an order ID value of one, two, three, four. This is very practical. You'll see this on a lot of e-commerce sites. In fact, you'll see a lot of this on a, on a variety of e-commerce sites. Email can be used for enhanced conversions to strengthen a conversion with, with uh, matching and modeling in the cases where a cookie is, is not present or in the case where cookie deprecation can affect the strength of your conversion tracking tag, you can use a supplied value from the data layer in this case. You know, a developer can also extract it from the DOM, but again, we're showing it in the data layer. This is the most robust way to pass an email, right? You can see here it's clear text and you can then utilize all of this stuff here in Google Tag Manager. Okay, so there's the implementation. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna re-upload my file to my web server here. This is called NetLiffy. And I'm gonna go here to deploys. I'm gonna go to the bottom, browse to upload, and I'm going to find it. I'm gonna go to the desktop. There it is, upload, upload. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the site. Here it is, I'm gonna refresh. Perfect. Now, how do we know that the data layer is successfully implemented? We can't really check Tag Assistant in the way that we did for GTM and Google Tags in the last video. Okay, it's not as easy. What we need to do 
it's kind of that second way that I showed you how to do tag debugging and, and data debugging. You're gonna right click on this screen. You're gonna click on inspect and then go over here to console. And then what? We're gonna type in data and then oops, make sure it's lowercase data and then layer with a capital L. Press enter. And you can see that it says four here. So it just kind of wants to be expanded. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this triangle and expand it. We've got here gtm.dom, gtm.load, gtm.js. These are the standard things that are loaded into the data layer just by virtue of having Google Tag Manager. And if you see here, these are the things that we added, right? So we added conversion, we added the user's email, the visitor type is customer, and the order number, right? So the idea is it reflects here, order number, uh, the email, and visitor type is, the idea is that the, the, uh, the developer would have supplied that based on the type of visitor. Okay, so let's explore that. If you expand on array element zero, we've got, this is what our data layer is, and it's, it's implemented on our site. And then what, you might be asking. So let, let's go over to Google Tag Manager. Let's, um, let's do something with uh, order of one, two, three, four. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, click on tags, Let's call it uh, Google Ads Conversion Tracking. Click on here, click on Google Ads Conversion Tracking, right? And again, you're gonna get all of this data from Google Ads, there's gonna be a conversion ID, there's gonna be a proper conversion label. What I wanna show you though, is for the order ID, it's typically gonna be transaction ID. So let's go ahead and use the, uh, I'm trying to find my tab, uh, this one, two, three, four as our transaction ID. So in the data layer, it's called order. So we'll go back to Google Tag Manager. And for transaction ID, right, we want every conversion tracking event or whenever it's kind of, whenever the conversion action is fired, we want it to be unique. So let's click on this Lego block Let's click on this plus sign to create a new variable and we'll call it order ID. And then <clears throat> uh, order ID and then right, the location. Location is gonna be data layer. And then what is it? Well, it's gonna be order ID. Okay, so what kind of variable is it? Choose variable type. So we're gonna go here, it's gonna be a data layer variable. And then remember the name of it is just order, okay? So let's go back here and we'll just write order in here. I'm gonna hit save. You can see now the transaction ID is actually our data layer variable for order. Currency code, just hard code that. And um, let's create a trigger for it. So let's grab an element of the URL, empanada, copy. We'll say um, empanada Location in brackets, like what I did before. Type is a trigger. Or you can say page view. Okay, so the trigger type, page view, some page views. When page URL contains empanada, save. That should fire our conversion tracking tag, and we should we should see a transaction ID of remember? one, two, three, four, because that's our order ID, right? Order ID, transaction ID. I'm using those interchangeably. Click save. 
and then press submit, publish. You're gonna to wanna to add a name and description because you're a good digital marketer. Okay. Now, what we should see is instead of Tag Assistant showing one, it should show two because the Google Ads conversion tracking tag should load when page URL contains empanada. So let's refresh. There you go, I'm right. Two, page URL contains empanada, so that logic checks out. And there it is, Google Ads conversion tracking tag. Okay, now let's see if we can see the order ID. So it doesn't show in Tag Assistant. So we go over here to network. Let's search for the label. So let's grab that label from here. Go here and filter the network pad for those zeros that represents your label. And let's have a look at the first one. Let's see if we can find one, two, three, four, our order ID. Could either be in a query string or maybe it's somewhere else. Okay, searching, searching, let's see. Usually Google Ads will build a URL. So there's label equals that. There it is. OID equals one, two, three, four. Hope everybody can see that. If you can't, I'll copy it. I'll put it here so it's more visible. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, where was it? Uh, yeah, conversion. That's your uh, order ID. Generates a random string. Aha, uh -huh. there's our label, label equals. And there is our order ID, OID equals one, two, three, four. So what that tells us is this worked just fine. <clears throat> our Google Ads conversion tracking ID supplied this hard-coded information, the conversion ID, the conversion label, the conversion value, and the variable that we created. And that was a data layer value, sorry, a data layer variable that grabbed the variable name of order and passed the value of one, two, three, four. And that's evident in the network tab that we just saw. Okay, great. So our data layer works. So that's step one of this demo. Step two, I want to show you guys a custom HTML tag. Let's go ahead and do that. So add a new tag. And we're gonna say, oops. So again, location is Banada page. Banada and Banada page, doesn't matter really. Uh, as long as my naming convention is consistent, so this again represented the location. And then the type, it's gonna be Facebook tag. And I'm gonna go, so again, is it present here? No, I don't see a Facebook tag present. Sometimes third parties will create a tag template for tags that aren't present. But uh, for the purpose of this demo, we're going to click on custom HTML. And you can see here, there's an HTML block. We're gonna go to this Facebook documentation here. And we are going to grab it from here. I got this from the developer's site. So this is, um, yeah, you can see their instructions here. Placing the code within your head tags reduces the chances of browsers or third part parties blocking the pixels execution. So GTM is high up in the head tag, so we should be good there. What we want is Google Tag Manager to simply deploy this code. And we're doing that through a custom HTML block. So I'm gonna, I copied it and I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, and we're gonna trigger, we're gonna use that empanada trigger because we already created it and it's being used by our conversion tracking tag so we can add it here for this custom HTML tag. So let's hit save. Great. Submit. Oh, 
publish, continue. Good. My, uh, my watchful eye is noticing some inconsistencies in my naming convention. Everybody should fix that, right? There's no brackets on this one, brackets on this one. Anyway, I digress. Go back to workspace. Let's go back to our site. So that Facebook tag is now published as an HTML tag in Google Tag Manager. So I'm gonna refresh. Okay. Again, doesn't show up in Google Tag Assistant. The reason being Tag Assistant only looks at Google Tags. It doesn't look at any other tags but Google. So what we're gonna do, we're going to right click, click on Inspect Network. Let's find a unique element to that Facebook tag. Let's try FBQ. Uh, where's my tab? Right here. FBQ, I'm going to refresh. So I'm filtering for FBQ. Let's see if that works. Hmm, it didn't work. Let's see. What would it be? FB events, that's it. Let's see if that's present in here. FB events right here. So we could effectively, we could have searched for that and it would have worked fine. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, there it is. So refresh, you can see. So let's go through it. There it is. You can see there's that 200 response. That means our empanada test website here, thank you for your purchase, is making a call to connect.facebook.net and facebook.net says, yep, I'm answering your call. Therefore, we're getting a green status code, a 200 HTTP response from Facebook. So that's all good. So it's it's been implemented properly through a custom HTML tag in Google Tag Manager. All right, that's fantastic. Hopefully all that stuff makes sense. Thanks for watching guys. And that was two more advanced use cases in Google Tag Manager. We looked at the data layer implementation, how to utilize that implementation by creating a data layer variable in GTM. And then we also created a custom HTML tag and we deployed the Facebook tag inside there. We can see that both are working properly. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.